The next episode of the commercial break starts now. Hey, back on the ground, boys! Oh, yeah, cats and kittens, welcome back to the commercial break. I'm Brian Green, and this is our special gossip correspondent, Kristen Joy Hoadley. Best to you, Chrissy. Best to you, Brian. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. Thanks for coming on board. Woo! Get All your PCB aboard. here! <laughs> I was laughing with my sister. Oh my god, that's too funny! (laughs) I was thinking about it too. (laughs) Something came up and made me, and I was like, "Get your hot boy nuts! Get your hot boy peanuts head! Don't touch no man's nuts until you get my nuts! Get these nuts! (laughs) Hot, boiled, and ready to go! These nuts!" So warm and soft air. Get your warm and salty hair. Go ahead, son. Reach down in there. Get you some warm and salties. 18 and over. Parents need permission. Oh, yes. Fun with the guy from the ballpark. You know that guy, that one dude who runs around the ballpark. Gold bear. <laughs> and you're like, Jesus Christ, I just want to watch the game. <laughs> Hot dog! <laughs> Who wants a foot long? Ma'am, I'll throw it to you. <laughs> yeah, they throw it. Yeah, they throw it to you. <laughs> they cut that shit out of the ballpark right here because somebody got <laughs> by a guy who was famously throwing peanuts for years. He would throw a bag of peanuts, you know? This was his gig. This was his thing. He was famous for this. Everybody loved him. He was like a a staple at the old Turner Field, and people loved him. And then it's all fun and game till someone gets an eye knocked out by flying nuts. (laughs) Get these flying nuts, hell! Yep, yep, yep! Look out for these nuts, ma'am! Here they come! Are you looking? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, he was the best. That yeah, guy was, was the best. He yeah. was. He's, I think he's still working. I just don't think he can throw nuts no, I don't anymore. I think so either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and postseason baseball is right around the corner. Love yes. me some postseason baseball. And the Braves are really good this they year. They really are. Yeah. They're doing great. Probably by the time this airs, they'll have won the World Series. But whatever. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here last on That's the commercial right. break. <laughs> The only place you can stay up to date on what happened yesterday. (laughs) Um, Yeah, the Braves are doing really good. I get excited about the the boys of summer turning into the boys of fall. That makes me excited. College Mm -hmm. football's on the... On the... It's is out there doing whatever it does. There are so many fucking college football games. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, like, I I, I don't... Because there's so many channels. (laughs) Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is that so many of these channels have bought broadcast rights Mm -hmm. for college football, all sports. Because you can go online, and at any given time, there is some kind of sport being played 24 hours. It oh, seems like live 24 hours I a day. I know. I turned on the TV this morning, and there was volleyball. I, I was know. watching I was like, cornhole yeah. tournament last yeah. night. A cornhole tournament. A cornhole tournament? <laughs> like, you know, hipsters with you know twisty mustaches, yes. like Fu Manchus. And they're doing cornhole with a beer in their hand uh-huh. for like a $100,000 prize. And, and they're really good at it, too, which is surprising to me. I mean, maybe not There's surprising. There's a technique but. to it, for sure. Yeah, but is it a sport where you win $100,000? guess so. If it was a sport where you were won $100,000, I would have paid a lot more attention, drank a lot more beer around exactly. that cornhole. I was always too... Yeah, I like playing cornhole, but I always got distracted by the things that were around me. The beer, the girls, the drugs. You know, the, the important things that usually yeah. are at a party. Not that corn... I remember the first time I saw a cornhole thing, and they were like, come on outside, play cornhole with me. And I'm like, cornhole? The fuck kind of party is this? <laughs> but hey, I'm up for anything, whatever. I'll bring the lube. No, then no, 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 no. It's where you throw bean bags in a hole. And I'm like, bean bags in a hole? What are we three? Is this Bozo the Clown time? What the fuck are we doing? And I got hooked pretty yeah, instantaneously. Uh, yeah, you do. You get hooked pretty quickly. But cornhole, keepy uppy, the balloon game. That's now a thing. Remember we we yes, reviewed we that years ago. They're still mm-hmm. doing that, and now it's like bigger than ever. There's foot golf. Have you heard of foot golf? No. It's where you take a soccer ball and you play golf on a modified golf course. I actually reached out to the guy about a year ago. I thought about having him on the show, and then I thought, no, we don't do good with that kind of thing. So <laughs> we don't do good with that kind of thing. But you actually take a soccer ball on a modified short course, and you kick the ball instead of... Uh, so it's like soccer and golf combined. And the person who does it in the least amount of kicks then wins that hole. I'm assuming it's a bigger hole. 
Oh, it's a bigger <laughs> hole, Chrissy. That cornhole's really big. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so it's fascinating, but this is a sport that I've seen televised. Volleyball is all over the place this weekend. And I watched a volleyball game, Nebraska against somebody. You remember how we talked about a couple weeks ago, Nebraska had the largest, I think it was Nebraska, had the largest ever crowd for a volleyball game. It was like 100,000 oh, right, people. Right. Do you remember that? Yes. I watched that. Those fucking kids go crazy for that Nebraska volleyball team, that fee- that the women's volleyball Who team. Who knew Nebraska, too? I guess there's I mean, not much to do up there right. except husking corn. So And volleyball. And volleyballs. <laughs> <laughs> you do one of those two things. Yeah. But I've traditionally not been like a sports guy. You know this about me. I'm mm-hmm. not a sports guy. I'm too distractible. I'm too in my own head. I'm, I'm, I want to look at a mirror rather than watch somebody else play something. <laughs> so We've I, always loved golf. We've I like golf. golf. Yeah. We've watched a lot of golf. I've always liked baseball. Mm-hmm. I've always liked March Madness. I like it when there's actual like stakes, when the stakes are high. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in the regular. I don't get too interested in the regular games. I get interested when it comes down to like playoffs or yes. championships or something like that. But I tried for one minute just to be a man and fucking watch some college football this this weekend, and I could not do it. I could not keep up with all the comings and goings of all the football players. I just couldn't. I was like, wow, there's 300 games on. Which one do I watch? And then as if not like totally paralyzed by the situation, then not only do you have to look for the game that's actually interesting, right? But then you have to watch a lot of it. It's like four hours of it. So... You know, people well, I always think you ask need me to pick a team. I don't and pick then a team. Follow that team. Yeah, but if I pick a team, then I'm one of those guys, the <laughs> team guys. You know what I'm saying? We go out to dinner last night, and there's this woman and this man sitting right next to us. So I got 12 children. Yes, you do. Whenever I go out to eat, it's it's difficult. <laughs> it's not easy. There's nothing easy about going out to eat yes. because you know that there's I've got good, a story about yes. that too. It's just like the second the kids sit down and see that they're going to have to be stuck somewhere for longer than three and a half minutes, they instantaneously get the wiggles, and they have to go somewhere else. Luckily, we're outdoors. There's a big outdoor area where they can play. That's good. So Smart thinking on the restaurant. Smart part. thinking. It's a great restaurant. It's a great restaurant for families. It's a great restaurant in, a, in an af- fall afternoon like this. But the waitress, in her infinite wisdom, it was like she had pushed two, three tables together for us, but one of them we really didn't need. It was like a little right. small two-person table with a couch on the back. So she pulls that table off to the side. I'm going to say no more than a foot and a half. So these people are literally sitting on top of us. Well, one of my daughters, who is Simone Biles incarnate, decides that she is going to practice the pommel horse in between the two two tables. Do you know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Okay. So she's flipping her legs all over the place. Every time she starts wiggling the table, this guy's wide and spills over. (laughs) But they are the sweetest about this. I mean, they are so fucking sweet about that. You could not have asked for a better, better people to be right next to you when you have this kind of drama going on. So I keep apologizing. I keep telling Mona, my daughter, get off the fucking thing. It's not, God damn it. This isn't, what are you doing? (laughs) This isn't London 2020. Like you got to get off the thing. You can't do this here. Why? Why? Because they're trying to eat and you're spilling their wine. Why? I don't know why physics. Now stop it. Just stop it. Now I know. Sit down. When my parents used to say to me, because I said so, yeah. I'm getting real close to because I said so, because <laughs> I don't care anymore. I'm getting real close to I said so. <laughs> I try not to do it, but I'm getting there. I'm getting close. I try and explain why they, don't, they can't, yeah. can't do things. But my daughter, swear to God, she's flipping up her legs in the air. She's got both of her arms on the table. She's flipping her legs. I go to, so, of course, and the second that we sit down, everyone has to poo-poo, right? Poo-poo. <laughs> poo-poo, poo-poo, poo-poo. Whether you're in diapers or out of diapers, you have to poo-poo. It's as if the smell of food (laughs) makes their little guts turn into like, I don't know. It's like an airlock that just opens the second that we sit down at a restaurant where for five fucking seconds, I just want to sit and talk to other adults. Right. Right. You can, and you can smell like the little poots that are going on. You know, uh, (laughs) poo-poo. And I'm like, oh God. Yeah. Poo-poo. Let's go. Then we go and we got to go into the bathroom and you know. Why is there why is there only women coming out of the men's bathroom? Why is there why is there a man's bathroom? Why is there a family bath? And I'm like, I don't know. It's 2023. Things are complicated, son. I don't know. <laughs> we don't need to talk about this now. So I get my my one of my boys in there. Okay, I get my boy in there and you know, he's touching everything. He's like licking the toilet seat basically, <laughs> right? And I'm like, "Son, don't do that. Don't do what? Don't put your hands on the toilet seat, then put it on your mouth." Why, why not? <laughs> yeah. Because there's lots of germs. I have germs. Everybody has germs. <laughs> But I touch the toilet seat at home. It's different. It's our family germs. 
right. family germs are okay. Outside germs, not okay. We don't know where those germs have been. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know where those germs have been. We know where our germs have been. We don't know where their germs have been. That's why you got to do it. Sit so down. Okay, done. Yep, wipe her butt. Then I take one of my girls into the bathroom because now she has to poo-poo too. I take her. Daddy, why are we going in the boys' bathroom? Because I don't, quite frankly, I think it's the cleaner of the two. <laughs> I don't know. We're just going to go into the boys' bathroom because I'm a boy and that's where we're going, okay? So, you know, close the door. It's one of those single toilets. I swear on all this holy, never seen anything so ungodly come out of a child in my entire life. <laughs> it's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't flush it oh, down. No. I know. I was like, oh, oh you're so small. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> Where did that come from? Was that here when we got here? Because I'm pretty sure I flushed the toilet. Did that come back up from the toilet? What is that? Did that come from the toilet next door? It literally <laughs> floated up? I'm not oh, sure. No. What's going on? Couldn't flush it. Oh, my God. Chrissy. I, and then I'm just like, Ugh. and there's a line of, outside uh, the door, of course. of course. And I'm like, okay, here we go. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> there's no utensil or instrument to do anything about it. And then, of course, the, the girl is gawking at it. She's like, Daddy, look. And I'm like, yeah, that, I'd be proud of that, too, if we were at home. And I had a plunger or something. <laughs> So right. then we go, we wipe their butts, we come back. I was like, okay, okay, so while we're in the bathroom, uh, I am walking back up onto this like little pavilion that's outside where we're sitting and eating in this covered area, and I can see my daughter is doing this whole number again, right? <laughs> oh, and these people are trying their best to ignore what's going on. They're trying their best. But I watch my daughter, she flips up, she does a little kick. And the wine glass just goes. Oh. It just flies across the table onto the guy who is wearing. Like a white. No. <laughs> solid red Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So now two things are running through my mind right now. <laughs> number one, got to pay for that wine, right? <laughs> number yes. one, I got to get a new wine. <laughs> and number two, I'm going to have to make small talk with these people because I got to smooth this over. We can't go yeah. another hour just sitting here uncomfortably in silence, knowing that my daughter is, you know, kind of being a little rat ball. And, you know. So how about them dogs? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And now I get this. Oh, yeah, Trevor Smith, oh, four touchdowns. Yes, you see that? He's running back, quarterback, two yards, four yards, extra downs. His batting average is 3,000. <laughs> And I'm like, this is me, Chrissy. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing. So much better than we expected, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, man. What more could you ask for? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, honestly, we got the best. We got the best. <laughs> what can I say? You know, we're doing so good. I don't know a fucking thing that's going on with Georgia football. I just, he just keeps talking to you me disagree. and I just keep on saying yes. Yep. <laughs> so I think at one point he kind of caught on that I didn't know what I was talking about. He said something about one of the linebackers and forget about it. Once you get into linebackers, it's past yeah. quarterback, I'm out, right? Yes. <laughs> Start yes. talking about the yes. linebackers and rushing percentages or <laughs> you know averages or something like that. And I was like, yeah, man, I mean, listen, uh, that's we're, we're so solid on that side of the ball. And he was like, huh? <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, well, I, I don't like... I, uh, my brothers are bigger. We got to get my brother on the phone. He's a really big Georgia get fan. You want to talk to him? Yeah. Let's get him on speaker. So he called, he called on to my bullshit, stopped talking to me after a while. So I just bought him dinner altogether. Nice. <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah. They were super sweet. Super sweet. That's so nice. Well, speaking of going out to dinner this weekend, my sister came in town without the kids. Ooh. Just the two of us. Sister weekend. We had so much fun. We perused all the fun, the fun trendy, like, bars and restaurants around town and we had a great time but was we all laughed because we walked into this one place and they were like yeah just let us know we've got this high top here or you could sit at the bar and i like i like sitting at the bar and eating sure a lot of times too yeah with, you know if it's just two of you there's yeah. two people yeah why not so I'm like, Kelly, you know, which one would you want to take? And she was like, I don't get the option to choose either one of these when I go out with <laughs> you usually. So yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I never considered the bar or the high top thing. A whole new world. <laughs> no. I was like, that's true. Yeah, it's, when you have the little kids. It is so difficult. It's a, you big, just, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Dinner. But here's what Astrid and I agreed to long before we had children. And I'm kind of glad that we did. You can't stop doing the things that you like to do. You got the right. kids got to learn. And they don't, but they, you can pretend <laughs> yes. that they do. Yes. The kids the kids have to learn to adjust to your lifestyle to some degree, right? Kids will, it doesn't matter. You have one kid, half a kid, three kids, I don't care. 
your whole life is going to change. Nothing is ever going to be the same. But you can bring some sense of normalcy, and it's the only way to treat them, like to, to get them to a point where they understand how to behave. You have to put them in the situation, yes. right? And then you got to guide them. Well, that usually ends up me just yelling at the end of the. <laughs> that ends up with me asking Wine's for the check. Filled. Yeah, I ask for the check before the food comes. Sometimes I'm like, I'll take the check. She's like, your food hasn't come, and I'm like, I know, but I just want to be ready as soon as it does. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take five to go boxes in the check if you don't mind. <laughs> I've already paid for four people's dinners. <laughs> I need to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> but the reality is the kids. They, they do adjust. You know, they say there's there's an old saying. If your kids are well-behaved, they're, they're well-behaved when you're not around. True. And so the old adage is, like, you have them here 24 hours a day. They're always around you. And sometimes they drive you up a wall because that's what kids do. That's what they're supposed to do. They're built, by, they're built like that. That's <laughs> yeah. by design. But then we always get these reports back when we send the children to, to a school or a school function or with family members or whatever. We get these reports back. They were so lovely. They were just so nice, so polite. We took my son, one of my sons somewhere, and, he, and the person who, is, who had been watching him was like, a, um, whatever. She was like, your, your kid is so polite. He said, please. He said, thank oh, you. And I was like, hear. the fuck he is. <laughs> yeah, right. You got the right really? report there? You t- <laughs> you're looking at the right notes over there? Because I don't think that's true. <laughs> but I'm proud of them because I think that they're, they're, they're polite when they things. have to be. Yes, right? they're picking up on now things. Now I see what my dad said. You know, Chrissy, <laughs> every fucking thing that my dad said was <laughs> true mean, to some degree. Yeah. I am turning into my father. By necessity. And now I understand. Yeah, it's a long, it. slow process, but it happens. And then one day you wake up and you realize that telling your kids, because I said so, is not a bad thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> I had to bring back that corporal punishment. What's up with that? I'm too much, I'm, I'm too much of a, a ninny to actually you no, know, do you, corporal punishment. No, you guys no, are no. really calm parents. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. That's We try that. Every 15 minutes you see our, us with our children, we say, okay, Chrissy's here. Be calm. <laughs> 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 Company's over. Yep. Be calm. <laughs> Speaking of kids, you know, there, if you, you can't see, but in the studio here, we have a million boxes over there uh, yes, in the do. corner. And the reason is that we are changing the studio completely. We feel like it's time to up the game in our technology department, which right now is basically... 7,000 wires, duct tape, super glue. I think I have Gorilla Glue on electronics around here. I swear to God I do. I know I have Post-its holding things together. I mean, there's a, there is a wire bundle under this carpet upon which I just don't even look at. You no. remember in the movie Never Ending Story, Atreyu is walking through those two the sphinx. topless sphinxes. Yes. Yeah, first time, first time I ever saw boobies. I love that part. They were and beautiful boobs, too. They were beautiful boobs, weren't <laughs> they? They were, they were like made of sand. I know. And like icy blue or something. I, I don't remember. Know. Those something. are great yeah, tits. No, I was mesmerized, too. And, and, and it was a, a movie everybody went and saw, <laughs> know. you know? Why are we all so upset about tits now? <laughs> I mean, it's a tit. <laughs> but they were great tits. They were. And I loved that movie for that reason. They were great tits. <laughs> Uh, so he walks through, and the turtle says to him, when you go through that sphinx, don't look oh, at the look. sphinx. You yeah. cannot show fear. Fear is the mind killer. If they sense that you have fear in your heart, they're going to light up and they're going to destroy you, and that's what they almost did. The he had laser to run away. Eyes. The laser eyes. That's yep. right. Those were crystal blue. I remember that. Those were beautiful, too. That is the wire bundle that is sitting under this carpet <laughs> right now. Because if I open it up and, I, and they smell fear, they're going to explode. We have a computer that's on fire. It's running like a thousand degrees right now. I know. We have to make some changes to the technology that goes on in this studio if we ever want to do anything else. And I don't even think it's holding the show together right now. (laughs) So I'm in here working on this whole thing. We have all these boxes. We're getting stuff organized over the weekend. And my kids come trolling in, right? And I know it's a hard thing to be in this studio for a child. Why? Why? Because every single thing lights up. Oh, yeah. There are buttons. There are microphones, headsets, televisions. There's, it's a children's <laughs> delight in here. Yes. Remote. Yes. The one place in the house that probably the children would have the most fun <laughs> is 100% off limits to them. Yes. And so anytime the door cracks just a little bit and they can get in, <laughs> right. they get in. On occasion, 
on occasion, depending on my mood and the circumstances, on occasion, I will allow them in to yeah, play around, right? And when I say play around, I mean, don't touch anything, look at anything, or talk to me. <laughs> but if you can have fun besides that, knock yourselves out. <laughs> One of the kids gets in the chair, and I'm like, okay, just listen. Put on the headset, but don't touch the buttons on the board. That's very important. That's how daddy makes a living, a.k.a. that's how daddy keeps getting us in debt. And so <laughs> I say, don't touch anything on and this board. And then as soon as you say that to anybody, I think it's human nature. It, even adults, like, don't do that. You want the thing you yeah, cannot yeah, have. Yeah. I should have never said anything. I should have said, touch yeah, yeah. all the buttons all yeah. the time, and then there would have been, never been a problem. <laughs> I'm sitting there working. I don't know. Maybe it's 15 minutes tops, but I keep on looking back, right? But I can sense that something's going wrong. I don't know what it is, but I can sense that something's going wrong. So I stand up. I tell all the kids. I say, okay, kids, let's get out of here, and let's go do something else. I come back later on in the evening, and wouldn't you fucking know it, Chrissy? I had heard a weird song yeah. playing through the roadcaster, and I was like, I don't remember having that song in the roadcaster, but I'm not really sure how it works anyway. Yeah. So I, I'm just going <laughs> to leave it alone. But when I go to do a commercial, I realize that the roadcaster – has been factory reset. Oh, my God. My kid factory reset the entire roadcaster <laughs> upon which we... It's the brain center of the... Some people think Brian's the brain center. <laughs> no, uh uh Not even Chrissy. It's the roadcaster. Yeah. The roadcaster's not working. No one's working. Right. So... Oh, factory reset. My kid reset. factory reset this fucking thing that took us four months and two separate microphone experts to put in touch. And of course, I have no notes anywhere on exactly what the settings were. I could just hear in my kid's head while, he, while I was sitting at that thing. Oh, Daddy's gonna love this. I'm gonna do this to all these buttons. Oh, look at this pretty red button. It says delete. Yes! Are you sure? Absolutely. Look, Dad, look how big I've gotten. See, just over here, helping you do some work. Oh, look, it's all zeros, Dad. Is that a good thing? No? Oh, well, I'm just trying to help. There, you clean up the shit storm. I'm going to go poo-poo. See you later. You <laughs> can hear his little head running around. Uh, I'm such a big helping. boy now. I get to help Daddy. Mm -hmm. Look at all this. <laughs> but Daddy then had to spend four fucking hours... Putting everything back in this roadcaster. Oh, well, you, you, you freshened it up with some new sounds. So, <laughs> could have freshened it up with a new host here pretty soon, is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Chrissy, are you ready? I keep saying that you need to get like a clear box type thing that goes over it, like a cover of some sort. Oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> the buttons aren't there. To Somebody talk. with a brain in their head would have thought about that a long time ago. <laughs> like, you know, those typewriter. <laughs> covers yes but like a metal cover with a yes. lock on it yes yes <laughs> ah, daddy put a box on the pretty thing okay huh? well let's use all the codes he uses throughout the entire house on his phone on the front door and on every website let's you see that oh, right, open right up <laughs> let's press that big red button again delete yes are you sure absolutely everything will be lost no problem daddy will fix it <laughs> <laughs> the kids would figure that out too. They know how to get into my true. phone and the front door and the safe. They know how to get into everything. <laughs> God damn, dude! I know what my They're dad quick. went through now. I, mean, I know what my dad went through. I'm and, and my parents. I'm, I'm starting to feel a lot of empathy for for my parents because I see that just a little bit of like a little bit of mischievousness, a little bit of smarts, those two mixed together in a child that's not very old, under the age of 10, is really a dangerous thing. Yes. Yeah. It's, there's nothing easy about it. I feel like, you know how I'm always saying that Blue is my worst behaved child? Blue's getting a run for her money right now. Blue might actually be the one in the house that's safe <laughs> from my vengeance. Well, Blue can't push the buttons. No, Blue can't. Well, yeah. Blue could push the buttons if I put it down low enough for her. <laughs> yeah. If I put this down on the floor, Blue would definitely have it in shreds. She would lay it on. That's lay right. On it. <laughs> Blue would have her own show. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone keeps telling me, get to, get, get, you got to get your dog on Instagram, man. Yeah. That's where it's at. And I'm like, the fuck I'm going to get my dog? I could barely get a thousand people to pay attention to the commercial break on Instagram. What am I dog going to do? And then this guy was telling me, he has an Instagram page, his own personal Instagram page. There's 300 people on it. 300 followers. That's it. His dog has an Instagram page. There's almost 300,000 followers on that page. It is literally nothing but dog pictures of this dog. People love cute dogs. At, to the tune of 300,000 people? 
Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Do you want updates on dogs? <laughs> I don't give a shit about the updates about people. Why would I care about the dogs? <laughs> well, dogs are kind of neutral. The dogs aren't going to make you feel jealous. That's true. Of some beautiful There's no place politics. that you're not There's at. no religion. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No politics or religion. Well, maybe we should all have just, maybe it should just all be dogs just on dogs. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't the world be a better place if we just had <laughs> dogs on social media? Yes. Because social media is trash. And I've been through this. I'm not going to go through it again, but I'm done with mm. Facebook. I don't even know what Facebook is anymore. Facebook is just a cesspool of awfulness and nonsense. There's really nothing interesting happening on Facebook. <laughs> Speaking of my dad yesterday, oh, I, think I'm gonna, on Facebook? I think I'm going to get a Facebook page. <laughs> he goes, who's on there? And I go, uh, it's kind of for older people, actually. <laughs> Chrissy, I have made a decision. I am getting on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, you're kind of late to the game, but okay. That's right. Play around with it. I don't uh, know. I'm going to respond to Clippy next time he comes on the computer. <laughs> Asks me if I need help. <laughs> I found a friend. I've been talking to somebody. Oh, really, Dad? Who is it? A guy named Clippy. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping me with all my documents. <laughs> nice gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's going to get on. All- I know. I didn't want to make him feel too bad, but he was like, you know, we'll be watching the news and so-and-so has a Facebook page. And they say, go get the recipe that we just showed you on my Facebook page. I was like, well, who's telling him to go I to guess Facebook that's page? True. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Wait, what news channel is he watching where there's recipes? <laughs> the old one. <laughs> the old people's <laughs> one. <laughs> well, to be fair to your father, who's a young and spry man. He is. But to be fair to him, Facebook is the place for his age group. Yes. Because that's all that's left <laughs> are people right. over 65 yes. bitching and complaining about politics and religion. And that's it. And I don't want to have anything to do with it, quite frankly. Oh, no. It's my friend who's gone on tour. <laughs> My friend who just like it's it's a constant it's a stream of consciousness conversation going on about how awful his life is 24 hours a day and then occasionally pictures that people just they like a photo dump like an album dump yeah and I'm not really all that interested in it you yeah. know so I'm not and I'm not sure any of the social media platforms are any much better but I, I, I choose Instagram and TikTok over yes. Facebook now yeah do you have Instagram and TikTok I do I know you have Instagram you have mm-hmm, TikTok mm-hmm. Mm. I probably should probably know that one, huh? <laughs> you want to tell everybody, Chrissy? I know. I don't. <laughs> I am incognito on TikTok. You're incognito? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not. I don't. I follow like two people, and they're chefs. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting recipes off TikTok? No, just in case. I, I had to get it in case someone sends me something on TikTok, so then I can look at it. Oh, and I like okay. to look at our TikTok. Yeah, our TikTok's good. Yeah. If anybody would follow it, it would be better. <laughs> We have, a t- it. we have a ton of likes, but we have nobody that follows. We have like 200 <laughs> followers. And I think we got like three or 4,000 likes, which is good. But it's like, if you like the content, but you won't follow me, I guess that's not that good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not doing that great. <laughs> I mean, I feel complimented by the heart, but, you know, <laughs> can you go one extra step and just press follow? I would appreciate it. <laughs> this is why we're so bad at social media. People are like... Uh, that part was kind of funny, but I checked out the rest of the page, and I'm not interested in giving you an actual follow. It takes work. It does. It's it takes a lot, a lot of work. Of work. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, we, we have somebody to... else that cuts the clips for us, so <laughs> yes. I just post them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. We seem to be doing a touch better. We finally made it over a couple thousand followers. Oh, good. So thank you for the followers. You're people. welcome. Speaking of uh, things that are monsters, it's October. We're here. We're in October. You know what that means? Halloween time. Mm-hmm. I saw my first Christmas commercial. Ooh. The other day, first Christmas commercial, oh, it was, oh, I just want to say who it was. Was it Folgers? I think it was Folgers. Um, and they had a Christmas commercial. I think it was Folgers. And they had a Christmas commercial. It's it's the first week in October. Christmas, pretty soon. And there are some countries, remember the Philippines? Like the Philippines uh, celebrates Christmas year round. A lot yes. of people do in the Philippines. Pretty soon in the United States of America, Easter is going to be the line of demarcation for Christmas. I can't believe how early Christmas comes. October? First week in October? Really? Uh, I know. It's crazy. I think it was last weekend that I got a text message from a company that I've bought stuff from before, and they were like, it's 100 days till Christmas. Oh, my God. Don't forget about your presents. Yeah, how can I I forget? "Ah." Uh, One time a year, I'll use (laughs) all the money I managed to save. Yeah, it's 100 degrees (laughs) outside. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's it's so weird. Hey, listen, but honestly, I'm not complaining. I love Christmas time. I love it too. But I do need there to be a little bit of a break in the weather before I'll actually feel yeah. Christmassy. Like when you're still wearing shorts and sandals right. out, it just doesn't feel very Christmassy <laughs> to me. I don't know what people in Florida do, you know? Yeah, they celebrate. I've actually spent Christmas down in Florida before mm. in Naples, and um, they still celebrate, you know. Chrissy's it's fancy. Just warm. She goes to Naples. <laughs> Naples, Palm Screen, West Palm, <laughs> the Hamptons. <laughs> uh, but I will say this. I do know from certain people that I know, uh, mainly Corona advertisements in magazines. <laughs> that you can the put little Christmas Corona lights. with the hat. Yeah, no. I like the beer bottle with the hat. No, I like the one where it's like the, <laughs> it's dark, like the sun is setting. There's a palm yeah. tree and yes, they light lights, the Christmas lights. Light it up, yeah. yeah. And they have the little Christmas song. Uh-huh. Good for Corona. I like that one. That was yeah. a good one. But anyway, <laughs> speaking of Halloween, it's right around the corner. At least those companies want you to think it is. <laughs> the Halloween <laughs> store wants you to think it is. It's right around the corner. What a better time. And honestly, there is a little bit of a break in the weather. At night, it gets a little bit chilly. And yeah. by chilly, I mean... 62 degrees, right. which is chilly to nobody. <laughs> but that's how, I, that's how cold I like it in my house when I'm sleeping. Yes. So I figured what a better time, what a better moment to come back and visit one of our favorite ghosty, ghouly type things. Oh, I th- are you ready? I, th- I think I you know, know what, what I'm talking that's about. That's right. And you know what I'm talking about there in the podcast universe. It is time for Chrissy and Brian to revisit some of our old friends, the Mountain Monsters. Monsters. That's right. Everybody loves it. Everybody knows it. The Mountain Monsters. I found a compilation video. Puck, (laughs) puck, fuck, chuck, I don't know, luck. And a good friend, Billy, the camera guy. (laughs) Oh, shucks, guys. I don't really know what you want me to do. You say you want me to film the monsters, but we don't really have any monsters. So what do you want me to do? What's that? Just point it down the ground and shake it like this? Oh, okay. Whatever you guys want. You let me know if there's an actual monster so I can run in the opposite direction. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. (laughs) Billy, Huck, Buck, Chuck, and Fuck, they're all All back. All the gang's back. All the gang's back. I found a compilation video. Oh, yes. Of the best of the best of this last season of the Mountain Monsters. And while this will get demonetized in three seconds on YouTube, I don't give a shit. We don't make any money there anyway. (laughs) We don't make any money here either. We don't make any money on this stupid podcast, so it doesn't matter. TLC is uh, Travel Channel is really good at catching those mountain monster voices. They they oh, demonetize yeah. every video that really we yes absolutely. <laughs> but that's okay. It's all fair yep. use. We're just reviewing it. We're just having fun with it. So without further ado, I was trolling on the internet as you do as I do like to do. Let's take a listen to the mountain monsters. Being out here in these cornfields at night, it's dangerous as hell. Something could be on top of you before you even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just funny. It's like the rusty nail bar down the street. Pretty soon, people on top of you, you don't even know what happened. It's like that party in the woods. Them hippies come down here every month. <laughs> in the cornfield. In the cornfield. You got husks and holes and all kind of shit. Pretty soon, all you know is someone's on top of you fucking you. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> right here, guys. Wow. What do you got, got? Will? <laughs> I got a very large bed of something. Check this out. Wow. There's nothing there. <laughs> it's just a- I got a very large flat spot of corn <laughs> with a tie dyed t shirt, <laughs> two grams of. Smoodly doodly. <laughs> that new shit turning people into zombies. <laughs> Tranquilium or whatever they call it. Look how large that is. That's big. Whatever this was, was laying in this position. Like a cat. Yes. <laughs> One of the guys that has, was me. has gotten down into this, <laughs> this part of the corn hole. Uh, <laughs> and laid down it's just like a, a flat cat. spot. Yeah, yeah. laying down. <laughs> that was me. I just take a little cat nap, guys. <laughs> Literally like a cat. Hope you don't mind. That was good for the show. All right, cool. Let's keep it in. I can tell this ain't no typical deer bed. Whatever was here was here a few minutes ago. We say we head that direction. I don't want to go in there and rush it because if we jumped it once, I don't want to jump it again. <laughs> Excuse me. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> I just shart myself. <laughs> I thought it was a sneeze. Ended up being a shit. It's a sneeze. <laughs> Boys, I'm going to need a change of drawers. 
<laughs> Remo, brother. He just got a hairball. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I chalk one up for the Mountain Monster Riders. Oh. <laughs> they did not go on strike, by the way. <laughs> not part of that organization. <laughs> it's possible that what better down here could have been the same thing that's making those screaming noises. Hey, Will, hold up a second. Yeah. Right in here. I mean, Austin said. none of those guys are going to be fast enough to get away from something. No, what do you think like they're going to do? <laughs> this is why I keep saying this show is ridiculous. <laughs> it's because they are they got BB guns, basically, <laughs> as defense, which they never shot not once. No. <laughs> they've, they've seen a bunch of monsters. They've been chased. They've been run down. They've run after them. What? Who in the right fucking mind is chasing off the Yeewa monster of, you know, Mount McKinley or whatever the fuck it is? <laughs> seven stand. It stands seven feet tall with bloodied claws five inches long that have been known to take a man's head off with one foul swoop. It makes no noise when it runs up on you. Pretty soon you'll just be a decapitated little schm- puppet for the Yeewa wolf of Mount McKinley. But let's stand here in the dark and figure out if we can fight it. <laughs> and laugh about the fucking, sneeze. Yeah. But that sneeze was hilarious. He heard him. Why don't you let me blow my coyote call and see what happens? I'm down with that. Stop. I'm down with that. Get that coyote call out. <laughs> you go ahead and get that coyote call out. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nope. Wrong one. Get the other one out. We're going to South Carolina and Oklahoma and Arizona. Yeah! And North Dakota and New Mexico. Yeah! We're going to California and Texas. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to bust out the old coyote call and see if I can get a response. All right, guys, listen up. They're surrounding him. So what you don't see is that Huck, <laughs> who is the very large gentleman who kind of is the leader of the pack here. There's two Hucks. There's Huckleberry and Huck, and this is Huck. And he's standing in the middle of this corn pasture and now all the guys are surrounding him but standing outside as if he's the president of the United States. <laughs> In a motorcade (laughs) that was standing around him while he's got a duck call in his hands. What do they think? It's just going to come running out of the woods the second he blows it? Here I am. Yeah, here I am. Come eat me. (laughs) Here I am. Come disembowel me. That sounds like a donkey mating call. I've never heard a coyote make that kind of noise. What kind of coyotes I got where you live? What was that? You hear that? Whoa, what was that? It was a dog. It sounded like a dog barking. It was a car from the uh, parking lot of the QT over there in the corner. It was nothing. It was a dog that barked. Yeah. I definitely heard that. Right in the cornfield. Yeah, I heard it. That was something big. Well, you know what you did. <laughs> well, um, I don't know what we're supposed to do now, but take your $4 Walmart flashlight and point it that way. <laughs> that one guy standing I know. in a stance. <laughs> He's got a gun in his head. He's standing in his stance, pointing up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> As if something's going to come flying from the sky. These guys have seen one too many <laughs> scream movies. Let's get in the corn. I start cutting loose on that call, then we hear something right in the cornfield, not 45, 50 yards away. We're going to spread out and see if we can find exactly what made that noise in the corn. Let's do this, boys. <laughs> spread out. All right. Not sure why I'm yelling, but here's the plan. We're, we're right here, Buck. <laughs> I know. All right, listen up, boys. We're going to spread as far out as possible with our guns pointing in indiscriminate ways. Then if you hear anything, you keep shooting until I say stop. (laughs) Also, by spreading out, it certainly makes us more safe. (laughs) Yeah, because the corn is like over their heads. Yes, the corn is 10 feet tall. (laughs) What are they going to do? What are they? How do they signal to each other? What's going on here? They have no walkie talkies. I've never seen a cell phone on the fucking show. I don't know what's going on. Let's see if we can go up here and pick up a track. Go easy, guys. Stay Stay right. Look for track. All right, nobody needs to get in front of the other. 
up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Listen, 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 listen. I can hear it. <laughs> I can hear it. Somebody's Spotify. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, 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 right there, right oh. There. oh no! <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. <laughs> oh no! Just a couple hippies from the party. <laughs> I think they might be high on something. Stay right in front of him, Jack. Go. Easy now, stay ready. That wasn't no bobcat. Let's go. Go down. Old. No, it was a woman screaming. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Good buck. Easy now, easy. Slow down. You're getting way ahead of us. Come on. Everybody stay calm or there's going to be blood on this corn. It sounds like it's right up here, Josh. Stay, stay right calm or there's going to be blood on this corn? <laughs> you get better stay calm or the, uh, the <laughs> corn turns red, I think, is how the old riddle goes. <laughs> Stay calm and in a line, you'll be fine. <laughs> Get ahead, you'll see red and everybody's dying. Is that how it goes? I think something like that. My grandma used to taught me near the whacking tree. <laughs> Watch out. Oh, what in the world? My Lord. Got some dead chickens here, boys. Okay, what they have come up on <laughs> is a straw hut made out of the corn husks. With dead chickens wrapped around it. <laughs> Con- convincingly dead chickens. Like, yeah. it looks real. It does. This looks like a massacre. Chicken massacre. Who's working? No, guys, that's just, I got my, I got my wing party. You, you know how I do that every Thursday with the guys? <laughs> this is, I'm just drying the chickens out. <laughs> I'm de-blooding them. <laughs> de-blooding them. <laughs> Our way through the cornfield, all of a sudden, the corn opens up, and there's a huge structure. What is this thing? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Sound editing on this is amazing. <laughs> Whatever did this, where'd it go? That's a damn yeah, that's good, a good question. question. Listen. <laughs> Four out of five mountain monsters agree. This is a damn good question. Where did that thing go? <laughs> We came in here trying to find out if there was anything other than a bobcat and a coyote. And now we know there is. The best thing we can do is get out of here. Right now. Finally. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) Someone talk some sense into Buck over there. (laughs) That doesn't sound like the mountain monsters. They don't back down from a challenge. Whatever did that has imposable thumbs. Because they literally, like, built a fort yes. in the middle of a cornfield. <laughs> not exactly sure how to take this. Is this the Waya woman? Man, this ain't good, dude. We have to get to the bottom of it. Oh, the Waya the woman? The Waya woman. Waya woman. Oh, interesting. What is a Waya woman? <laughs> Sounds like, like my children. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? This is the Waya woman. I want nothing to do with it. We're not sure if the Waya woman's out here or not, but we came here to catch her. So I'm going to get started on a trap, and it needs to be a trap that can be placed right out here in this cornfield. That ain't nothing. Nothing gets me excited. <laughs> nothing gets me more excited when the mountain monsters say they're going to build a trap. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are good trap builders. <laughs> well, Willie. Willie. Yeah, Willie. Willie. Me and Wild Bill, we're getting ready to get started. We're back during the day, and <laughs> things are happy. Billy's going to build a big old trap. We're going to find a woman, a wild, wild woman. We're going to put her there, and then we'll put her back. <laughs> Build the trap for the wild woman. You need way? <laughs> I'll follow her. They have been two encounters with what we believe is this wild woman, and they're only about a quarter mile apart. So we're going to put this trap right smack dab in the middle. I have had exactly <laughs> two encounters with what I consider wild women. I'm going to put her back in her place in this here trap. Oh, war. Bill, we definitely got some foot tracks of something been through here. Plain as day, dude. This is going to be a spot we need to build that trap. We could clearly see when we look down at the ground that something's been walking back and forth between these corn rows and being right in between. Yeah, your <laughs> hefty asses were walking back and forth just seven hours ago. <laughs> Plus, how'd you get the trap back there? You didn't walk on it? <laughs> Asses. These two hot spots with the Y woman, this is going to be the perfect place to build this trap. Whenever that Y woman heads down that trail and goes into that trap and hits that trigger, 
That whole front door slammed down and locked tight. She'll be inside. They're literally building a cage, like a dog <laughs> yes. trap, for a woman. <laughs> Who is the Wyo woman? I what is this? They had like a little raw chicken breast. Yeah, put a raw chicken there. <laughs> Because she hung up 12 raw chickens last night. <laughs> yeah. Seems like she's really into them. <laughs> Get yourself a butterball. Put it over there. It's Thanksgiving time. <laughs> We've heard that wild women like to cook butterball turkeys this time of year. Fresh made biscuits and homemade gravy. <laughs> so we're going to leave some dirty pots and pans in this here sink and hope she comes to clean them. <laughs> we're going to remove... Two rows of corn for about 30 feet. Whoa, whoa, watch my toes. Then we're going to set some posts right there where them corn rows was. Get some of it. Knocked her out of the park, boo. We're going to start bringing in some cattle panel. Cooking with gas now, brother. Yeah. Nothing like some cattle panel to keep your woman indoors. (laughs) I got about 600 of these around my house. That's why you haven't seen my wife since 1982. Oh, my God. Right. Well, we got all that panel stuck up there. Why I want to be right at home in the hen house, brother. We made some great progress on this trap today. Let's go. I like my reality TV show with a bit of misogyny. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god Be right at home <laughs> this is your child. Oh yes she will uh, We're going to come back in tomorrow And put the finishing touches on <laughs> Solid as a rock Me and brother Willie just put the finishing touches On this trap Now we're getting ready for the rest of the team to come out See what we got I tell you, folks, they got them down, they down, they got them burning, and got them down, drunk of diesels, but they fall and go. Woo! <laughs> well, that's Wild Bill for you. That's Wild Bill. <laughs> so bad that the people who do the captioning for television don't even put <laughs> captions under what he says. <laughs> If there was a like an ASL translator at the bottom, this would be the notification she gave people who cannot hear. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> Corn's fine. Come on in. Hell yeah, That's what I'm talking about. Good job. Walking up and seeing that trap. Oh, Willie amazed me again. Hell, you could put an elephant in that thing. Oh, oh, man, great. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Oh, oh. yeah. Willie does this every time. This trap is solid as a rock. That thing's amazing. Willie, this trap looks awesome. Why don't you show us how it works? There's that twinkle, buddy. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> I got a twinkle in my tinkle. <laughs> Look here, down to earth. I'll tell you about it, I'll put it out there. And we can't see it. When the bitch rolls in, you shut it, you kick it out. Go, woo! Zow! Yee! And then I get a text message on my phone. <laughs> now, whenever that white woman comes right. White woman? Did you say white woman? Whatever that like white woman? Oh, okay. Why? I thought he said white woman. I was like, well. We wanted to change our mountain monsters. Also, up. we do not need to see Huckleberry in a overalls, jean overalls with no shirt. No, 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 no. We don't need to see any and, and of now, these guys with overalls <laughs> with no shirt. But I mean, that's the kettle calling. The pots. Down this trail she's used to using, she's gonna run right in here. See that bait? Grab that trigger. And once that trigger's released, that door will slam right down against the face of this trap. Oh, yeah. And right then and there, we'll incarcerate us a white one. Yeah! 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 We love women! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Yeehaw>! Yes, sir! <laughs> I want to see it. I thought you'd never ask. I want to see on. it, too. I mean, I'd yeah, love I wanna, to finally yeah. see something. <laughs> These guys just want to finally see a woman. <laughs> That's all they're looking for. <laughs> One, two. And and by the way, I actually don't think this is the most secure trap in the world because no. the door falls, but nothing locks. <laughs> so she can just push it out and push it open. Three. Trap 
works perfect. It secures tightly with two kick-out posts. The Wyo woman doesn't stand a chance. After finding those dead chickens... <laughs> well, they got answers for everything, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Another night, we figured the best bait is chicken. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah! We know this one. Hell yeah! <laughs> Why are they so excited? <laughs> They're chasing a monster. Hi. A demonic <laughs> entity from hell. <laughs> <laughs> they're chasing it in a cornfield <laughs> and they're all excited i don't get it buy a woman eats chicken we're going to use it as bait the only bad thing about it jeff forgot to tell us that's sunday supper this trap's perfect <laughs> uh... that's my opinion <laughs> it's baited and it's right between the two points where the wire woman's been running we're losing daylight it's time to put the wire woman in this cage Right here! Yeah! yeah. We're losing daylight. I'm not sure where it's going, but we're leaking it out the boat. So come on, boys. <laughs> Nighttime is fright time. Let's go! Yeah! Yay! <laughs> Hunt begin. Uh, Let's yeah. go, guys. Hey, Will. If we cut through that corn right there, we can get to the house a lot quicker. That's right on the other side. Right on the side. Let's do it. Man, I ain't liking that. It's like jumping out of the coals right into the fire. Me and Brother Willie's gonna take- That's not exactly how the saying <laughs> goes, but okay. <laughs> huh. Coals right into the fire. That's like jumping into the refrigerator out of the teapot. <laughs> Let's go catch that white woman. Shortcut to this corn. Get up to that blue house. Investigate it. Investigate it? Blue house. Blue house with investigations. Yes, that's what you do. It's the best kind of investigation. <laughs> Billy's investigation services. How can I help you? <laughs> investigation. We're going to the corn. Stay ready. This corn is thick. Just like your brain. <laughs> so spooky, but I'll keep it clear back here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're breaking out. We're coming up on that house. Right here, right here. We're good. Oh, hell yeah. Here we go, brother. Man, this looks, this looks, this looks creepy. We just got to this blue just house. Just now looks creepy. It just now looks <laughs> creepy. You didn't think about checking it out during the day since it's 25 feet from your trap. <laughs> you didn't think about calling the neighbors and asking them if everything was okay. <laughs> There's houses in the middle of the corn. What is going on? Uh, this is looking suspicious, guys. Man, does this place look creepy? I'm about to jump out of my boots. <laughs> I'm about to jump out of my boots. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Can you imagine being this guy's wife? No. <laughs> oh my god. Let's make sure we clear everything. Clear this, clear this, right here, clear this. Alright, guys. The next creature we're going to investigate. Oh uh... my god, there's a next creature that we're going to investigate. <laughs> they never give you the ending because they never want you to have the ending, but Well, because they don't find it. <laughs> well, no, they never do find it, do they? <laughs> Know about you, Chris. I don't get that saddle. Want another episode? Do the scary break. Yeah, yeah. Let's get after it. <laughs> All right. Well, Chrissy and I got to go practice our gymnastics. It's at the local bar on the high tops. <laughs> the so rusty we can't nail. Do too much of the rusty nail. <laughs> The rusty nail closed down. I Did you see that? that? That's unbelievable. Yeah. The rusty fucking nail. Uh, it was rusty, Ugh. all right. <laughs> Those walls could talk. My God. I Ooh. hope El Chapo's coming in to <laughs> save the wood on that floor because there's a couple kilos there. <laughs> oh, my God. There was only two reasons you went to the rusty nail. You had drugs or you needed them. That's the only <laughs> reason you went. And we loved it. At least that one time we loved yes. it. It was one of my favorites. I was going there oh. a long time. Long time. Goodbye, Rusty. Goodbye, Rusty Nail. <laughs> Though I never knew you were. <laughs> All right, here's what I need you to do. Go to tcbpodcast.com, the brand new tcbpodcast.com. All the audio, all the video right there, the entire library. You can check it out on our website, or you can get your free bumper sticker, your free TCB sticker. Go to the website, hit the Contact Us button, say, I want my sticker, and give us your address. We'll send one off to you. We don't know which one you'll get because we're the next sticker is coming out already. That was crazy how quickly we got rid of the what yeah, would Frankie for, do stickers. Frankie do. Yeah, so but we'll let you know. We'll give you a, a preview once we have them. But send your information in. We'll get you a sticker. Don't worry. 
Also, we now have an in-the-studio hotline that you can call. Leave your message. Leave your text message. 626-ASK-TCB-3. 626-ASK-TCB, the number 3. You can also always dial 855-TCB-8383. You can text us there. Questions, comments, concerns, content ideas, either of those phone numbers, you can leave it there pretty soon. We'd like to have you on the commercial break. So call up 626-ASK-TCB-3. Leave us a message, and I promise someone will get back to you. Add the commercial break on Instagram, TCB TikTok on a TCB podcast on TikTok <laughs> and YouTube.com slash the commercial break. Fully edited episodes the same day they air here on the audio feed. We just love it if you would go and subscribe to that channel. Thanks for your support of the commercial break. It means the world to us. All right, Chrissy, I guess that's all I can do for today. I think so. But I'll tell you that I love you. I love you. And best to you. And best to you. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, Chrissy and I must say, we always say, and we do say, goodbye. Goodbye. Yes,